Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of March 30th. Well, it's been nearly two weeks since that monster solar storm that we had back on St. Paddy's Day, and the sun has really quieted down. We're enjoying a well-deserved rest because all we're basically getting are a few filament eruptions here and there. Now, we thought we had region 2305 that was going to give us a few flares and, and start becoming a more active contender, but it really hasn't manifested. The biggest we've seen is that gorgeous prominence eruption there, which actually lengthened the, that coronal hole, and we have a threat for some solar storming because of some fast wind coming from those coronal holes, but that's about it. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the last time we actually had an M-flare was clear back on the 18th. That's when that old region 2297 actually was rotating around the west limb. Since then, it's been incredibly quiet. We thought we were going to get something from region 2305. As you can see, the flares picked up a little bit right around the 25th, but then they've died back down again, and it doesn't look like we're going to see anything anytime soon. Now switching to your storm levels, you can see the huge impact of that monster geomagnetic storm that happened over St. Paddy's Day. And on the back side of that storm as it began to calm down on the 18th, it was compounded by a high speed stream that had some fast wind in there. And so it just made the effects of that storm linger on day after day. And then we'd have little minor disturbances, little wispy solar storms in the solar wind that would just pop us back over storm levels because it never really got the, gave the Earth's field a chance to kind of settle down. And now only since about the 23rd or 24th have we started to really see the field settle back down uh, and go back into a normal condition. And the lingering effects from this solar storm, as well as the ensuing high-speed wind, brought us continued gorgeous aurora uh, in places like New Zealand and in Norway and Finland. It also brought us gorgeous aurora in Iceland as well as Fairbanks, Alaska, and also Ontario, Canada. Now, as of March 15th, Stereo A, our backside monitor, is now completely behind the sun and no longer an eye shot of Earth. And for safety reasons, we have actually shut down all the instruments aboard the spacecraft as it continues to cross up the backside of the sun until about July 2015, when it will actually come out the other side and will be with an eye shot of Earth again. At that time, we'll be able to turn the instruments back on and resume imaging the backside of the sun. Until then, we have to deal with the fact that that five to seven day prediction that we used to get, we just won't have for a little while. So we're anxiously awaiting Stereo's return. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2303 and 2309. They have been the fastest growing regions on the disk, but they have since rotated off of the west limb. The only other M-flare contender we have is region 2305, which is rotating past center disk. Everything else on the east limb is reasonably stable, and we're not anticipating any new regions to rotate on the east limb within the next three or four days, so we're expecting conditions to remain pretty quiet. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some really strong fast wind from two coronal holes that are coming kind of back to back with each other. NOAA is anticipating that we should have minor storm conditions with about a 70% possibility of major storm conditions at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, we're expecting active conditions to possibly minor storm conditions. We've got about a 30% chance there, and that should last over at least the next couple days, uh, which with possibility of it lasting even further into the beginning of April. After that, things should begin to calm down once again, but it should give us a nice chance for some aurora, uh, despite that it probably will impact your GPS and it might make the amateur radio bands a little bit tough to work. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming days, NOAA is giving us about a 25% chance for an M-class flare over the coming week from regions 2305 and also some new growth in region 2315. Now both of these could be really low level M-flare contenders over the coming days. However, they're not strong enough to be giving us any threat for particle radiation storms at this time. So the storm possibilities for this week are actually looking pretty good. We may not have any solar ejections coming at us, but because of those two coronal holes, we do have an enhanced uh, fast wind that will be slamming us over the next couple days or so. NOAA is predicting that we might even have a very strong solar storm up at high latitudes because of this fast wind which is great for aurora photographers. We might even see aurora coming down to about mid-latitudes, but you ham radio operators and GPS operators, you may have issues sporadically over the next few days or so. And then things should begin to settle down again. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.